What's up everybody, my name is Clint and welcome to the Makers Tube channel. In today's video, I am going to show you how to make your own personalized YouTube plaque. 29 inches wide, 19 inches high, but you can make these as big or small as you want. I'm gonna show you every step of the process, let's go. The wood we're using today is poplar. Definitely a little bit more expensive than pine, but much better quality. You can find this stuff at any big box store. Now what I did was I took my boards and I cut them in half. Originally they were eight inches wide, but my jointer only does six and a quarter. I really wanted these edges to be smooth and on point, but if you don't have a jointer, don't worry about it. Just find something that's milled half decent and it's gonna butt up against another piece of wood and you won't have to worry about a large gap. I did both edges and one face plane. From there, I took my jointed pieces of wood and then ran them through my Dewalt planer. And don't worry, again, if you don't have these tools, most lumber yards will do this for you. You might pay a little bit more than what you would for rough lumber, but it's worth it in the end. But once I was done with that, I just glued up all the edges, clamped them together, and then let them set overnight. Now, the next thing I did is go to Tinkercad. This is an absolutely free software to use. All you have to have is a Google or Facebook account and you can log right in. Tinkercad right here, not sponsored by them. This is just what I use. All I gotta do is go down to text, click it, drag it, double click, come up to here where it says text, and I'm going to go, and there you go. That's all you have to do. Now what I would suggest is bring the thickness down. You do not want this that thick. You will be printing forever. So how you do that is come over to your height and adjust it this way. You can go up, you can go down, but it's telling you how thick you are right here. You can also use these plus buttons, but it's just simpler to go this way. I brought mine down to around 182 and I think that was perfect. Now, depending on your printer size, you may have to bust these up a little bit. So once I printed out YouTube, I ended up printing out subscribe in three different sections. So I went SUB, and then I exported that into my printer, and let me show you what that looks like. Now, I am using the Dremel Digilab slicer, but this will work on any slicer that you are using. So right here, you can see that I have my sub, but it is way too small. So what I'm going to do is scale this up, and I believe I went 180. Nope, I went bigger than that. I went 220. You can go as big as you want. You can even bump this up to 235, I believe. And I believe that was the largest I could go. But I definitely wanted these larger. I went SUB and then the sub, scrap, buh, and <laughs> did it in three separate sections. Now this was definitely the longest part of the process. Even though the smaller letters were not that bad, the play button took forever. And that was even on a medium quality print. But don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to make this stuff look really nice, even though it's not the best quality. You don't wanna be sitting there printing this stuff for two days, right? Now, the one thing I do wanna point out is the Tool Review Zone, that's the name of the channel, and I really do wish I would have made these a little bit bigger than what I did. They just came out a little bit too small, but it's your preference, whatever you want to do. All right, let's take a look at this play button. It's nasty, it's ugly, we can't have that. If I paint that, it's gonna look gross. So we gotta clean that up a little bit. Now I actually grabbed the wrong stuff. I just wanted Bondo, but I got Bondo. It's basically door glass. It's a lot harder to sand and it's almost a resin, but it'll work just fine. This stuff is actually water resistant, but whatever. We're gonna mix this stuff up here and then what we're gonna do is add the harder to it and then we're going to apply it to our play button. Now, it's been a long time since I've used this stuff and I actually forgot how much it stinks. We're gonna add our hardener right here. I would definitely say do this in a ventilated area. I had to open up my doors and it was just not good. All right, now I put a little bit too much hardener in there. So this stuff is going to harden very quickly, but you wanna make sure that you mix it really good. You don't want any leftover green stuff. You want this stuff to harden. And because I put a little bit too much in, I don't have that much time to work with this. So I gotta mix this stuff quick and apply it. Now all we're doing is taking this Dora glass and smoothing over all of those nasties. We wanna get those in, all the creases, all the cracks, and then what we're gonna do here later is sand this stuff, but you're gonna be able to have a really nice, smooth finish. Even if you didn't print this on high quality, don't worry about it, this will help you. And I just wanna show you, this stuff is already starting to feel like rubber. Good thing we got that on quick. 
If I would have used a little less hardener, it would have took a little longer to dry. But yeah, this stuff is going to get hard as a rock. So now all we got to do is lay this out and that is how it's going to look on our wood. Again, I wish I would have made the tool review zone a little bit bigger, but it is what it is. So let's move it along. So now what I'm going to do is use my filler primer. You can buy this at any big box store. It's thick, it's nasty, but it covers well. You want to get a nice coat. This is going to cover any imperfection. Once you sand this down, you're going to have high edges on this primer and it'll smooth out perfectly. And then what we're going to do is paint our lettering. Now, at first I went silver with this. It just did not look good. I wanted the subscribe to stand out. So I then went back and painted over them in red. The next step was to sand the play button. Now, again, this door glass is extremely hard, way harder than Bondo is, so I had to use my sander. But if you use regular Bondo, well, you can do this with your hand. And then I primed it. I primed the crap out of it. So smooth. And then I just hand sanded the primer off the play button. Now, I used 80 grit sandpaper. I actually wanted to look like metal, like a, a stainless metal where it's brushed up a little bit. And then I painted it silver. So now all I gotta do is remove my wood clamps. This is 24 hours later and I think we are good to go. It's gonna be nice and tight. Don't have to worry about this thing coming apart. And then we're gonna chop off these edges right here. And of course the same on the other side. Now once that's done, we're just gonna sand this up a little bit, clean it up a little bit. You don't have to worry about any rough edges or splinters or anything like that. We're just gonna make it look real nice like. And now we're just going to route the edges. You don't have to do this if you don't want, but I think it looks a little bit better, so that's what we're gonna do. This is just going to give you a more finished look and feel. It's gonna show that you put a little bit extra time and effort into your project. Now, I do not want my stain to be blotchy or look bad, so I'm using pre-stained wood conditioner. Very cheap, you can find that anywhere in any big box store. You basically just brush this stuff on, then you can wipe it down, let it dry, and it's going to give you an even coat of stain every single time. Now, I usually don't use water-based stain, but this stuff here is actually good. It's almost like a gel. It's a golden oak is what I'm using, and it goes on really, really well. And because this stuff is so thick, I basically just brushed it on, let it sit for a while, and then I just wiped it off. I really liked the color of this, and again, it goes on perfect. And then once you wipe it off, you just get all those streak marks off, and it looks fantastic. And now it's just time to get all of your 3D printed parts, all the stuff that you painted, and start situating it on your piece of wood. Find out where you want it to be. Place it before you glue it. And now that you have it sort of figured out where you want it to be, you're gonna have to measure it out. Draw a line across, use your square. Do this on every single section. Just draw a line the entire way across that piece of wood so you know where those letters are going to sit. And then all I did was basically hot glue these letters to the piece of wood. Now you can do this any way you want. You can use hot glue, which is kind of a pain to butt on the smaller letters, or you can use a super glue, you can use an epoxy, whatever you want to use to stick these things. But I used a hot glue and it worked out great for me. And that is all there is to it, my friends. Now again, I wish the tool review zone lettering was a little bit bigger, but you can see the brushed look on that metal. Well, it looks like metal now. It's not all smooth. It looks like it's a stainless steel. But now you can make your own channel, your customized plaque for your studio, your office, your workspace, whatever. And it's not that hard, not that expensive. Hope this helps. If it did, please leave a smish on that like button. It would be greatly appreciated. Get subscribed, hit that bell notification. We're going to have more videos coming soon. Thanks for stopping by, all